you slowly open your eyes. There's a light above you, not blinding, but brighter than you expected. Somewhere off in the distance, you hear someone calling your name. You try to speak, but your voice sounds like it belongs to somebody else. Your mouth is dry, your brain feels heavy, and then it hits you. You were just in surgery. At least you think you were, but that makes no sense. You're sure only a few minutes have passed. But in reality, you've been under for five, maybe six hours. That, my friends, is a small taste of what it's like to wake up from anesthesia. I'm Dr. Daniel Medell, an anesthesiologist, and today I'm going to walk you through what it feels like to wake up, not just from general anesthesia, but also regional anesthesia and even light sedation. We'll talk about the science, the emotions, the weirdness, and why your experience might be totally different from the person in the bed right next to you. As I've said before in other videos, general anesthesia is not sleep. It's a medically controlled reversible coma. We use a cocktail of medications to switch off awareness, sensation, and memory so you can go through your surgery without pain or distress. When the surgery's over, or within a few minutes of being over, that's when we start the wake-up process. That usually means turning off the anesthetic gases or stopping the IV medications and letting your body metabolize and clear them out of your bloodstream. The first part of your brain to come back online is usually your brainstem, which includes the autopilot that controls breathing. That's why even if you have a breathing tube in place, you'll often start breathing on your own before you're actually conscious. Next, your eyes might open, and strangely, sometimes your eyes open before your mind is fully awake. So you might be looking around, but you still have no idea what's happening or where you are. I've had patients open their eyes, look right at me, and then not remember a single second of it later. Next come the weird sensations. A lot of people describe it as kind of a time warp, like you just blinked and suddenly you're in the recovery room. You might feel cold because anesthesia messes with your body's thermostat, or you might hear voices before you can even focus your vision, almost like trying to tune an old school radio. Some people wake up feeling groggy, like they've been in deep hibernation for an entire winter. Others are surprisingly alert for about a minute before drifting off again. And yes, it's totally normal to ask the same question repeatedly. I've had patients ask, is it over six or seven times in a row? And each time they react like it's brand new information. About one in three people will feel nausea after waking up from general anesthesia. So we often try to give anti-nausea medications ahead of time to try and prevent that. And emotions? Oh, anesthesia can unlock some unexpected ones. I've had patients wake up laughing, crying, screaming, even singing. You don't have much control over how your brain rewires itself during those first few minutes, so your emotions can come out raw, unfiltered, and sometimes hilarious. But not all anesthesia involves putting you completely under. Let's talk about recovering from regional anesthesia. Regional anesthesia is when we numb only part of your body. Think spinal anesthesia for a C-section, an epidural during labor, or a nerve block for a shoulder surgery. With regional, sometimes it's not uncommon to be awake the whole time, unless we add a little bit of sedation so you're just not sitting there bored for three and a half hours. But what surprises a lot of people is the disconnect between what your eyes see and what your brain feels. Like if you get an epidural anesthetic, you might look down and there are your legs, but they feel like they belong to someone else. You try and move your toes and nothing happens. Your legs might feel warm, heavy, and strangely comfortable, but as the block wears off, sensation slowly creeps back. Sometimes it's pins and needles, sometimes itching, sometimes just a gradual return of movement. And this is really interesting. Your brain actually rewires itself temporarily during regional anesthesia. It's not just numbness. Your brain is trying to interpret signals that are blocked, and sometimes that mismatch can make people feel uneasy. Some patients even describe it as an out-of-body experience because their brain says, those are your legs, but their body says, nope, not right now. For some people, it's less disorienting than general anesthesia because your mind stays relatively clear. For others, the sensation of numbness is unsettling. It's a very different wake up compared to general anesthesia. It's more about your body reconnecting to your brain, not your brain rebooting after a power outage. And then we have sedation, kind of the middle ground. For light sedation, like during dental work, you'll probably remember bits and pieces. The wake up is quick and you're usually able to have a conversation within a few minutes. For deeper sedation, like when you get propofol for a colonoscopy, it's a lot more like general anesthesia. You close your eyes and then the next thing you know, you're done. No dreams, no pain, just time travel. And because propofol clears from your system pretty fast, you usually wake up pretty clear headed without that groggy hangover feeling that sometimes comes with inhaled anesthetics. It's like taking a short nap where the world just kind of skipped forward in time without you. One thing a lot of patients say after sedation is that was the best nap of my life. And I have to remind them it wasn't really a nap. 
You didn't rest. You didn't dream. Your brain wasn't doing its usual repair work. It was kind of just switched off. But it feels like a nap because of how suddenly you go from awake to nothingness to awake again. Now, I'd be lying if I said all wake-ups are boring. Sometimes people say and do some pretty wild things when coming out of anesthesia. I remember this one guy who woke up talking complete gibberish, like I couldn't understand anything he was saying. Until finally he takes this big breath and screams at me that he's trying to teach me philosophy. Oh, okay, that's normal, my bad. This other guy was just waking up when he opened his eyes, looked up at me, and took a swing right at my face. Thankfully, I was able to dodge it, and some of the other people in the room ran over to help hold his arms down so he couldn't do it again. But he calmed down the moment we removed his breathing tube. And later, when I went to talk to him in the recovery room, he had zero memory of it. But he was really embarrassed when I told him what happened. And then there was this teenage girl, probably like 14 or 15, who woke up singing at the top of her lungs, my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. And she was good too. Like she could have auditioned for American Idol right there in the OR. But of course, recovery room nurses have heard everything under the sun. And no, we're not judging you. Most of us are pretty amused by it, really. But it's important to remember, we don't repeat those stories outside of anonymous anecdotes like I'm doing here. We never include your name or anything that could identify you. So you don't have to worry about the whole world laughing at you for that funny thing you said when you could barely even hold your head up. Unless one of your friends puts the video up on TikTok, of course. And I can't do anything about that. So why do people's wake-up experiences differ so much? Well, there's a lot of factors at play. Age plays a big role. Kids and young adults tend to wake up faster, but they can also be more agitated, like the dude who almost punched me out. The specific drugs we use matter too. For example, propofol usually produces a cleaner wake-up than inhaled anesthetics. Some medications hang around in your fat cells longer, so if you've had a long surgery, the grogginess can last longer too, as it takes a little while for those medications to seep out of your fat cells again. The length and type of surgery can make a big difference. A quick hernia repair is a very different recovery than a six-hour spine surgery. Your anxiety levels before surgery can shape the whole experience too. If you went to sleep anxious, you might wake up more confused or restless. If you were calm, your recovery may be smoother. And of course, your general health, especially things like sleep apnea, neurological conditions, or chronic pain can affect how you feel as you re-enter consciousness. No two patients are exactly alike. If you want the smoothest wake up possible, there are a few things you can do. Number one, stay hydrated before your fasting window. That helps keep your blood pressure stable, not wildly swinging from too high to too low the whole time. Number two, be honest about your alcohol, cannabis, or caffeine habits, because they can change how your body responds under anesthesia. We're not there to give you a lecture or report you to the cops. We just have to fly this airplane, and the more we know about its quirks, the better and more safely we can do that. Number three, definitely follow fasting instructions. It doesn't just keep your stomach empty, it reduces your risk of nausea afterwards, and it prevents dangerous complications like aspiration. Number four, always tell your anesthesiologist about any negative past anesthesia experiences, especially bad wake-ups. That way we can adjust the medications and try to avoid repeating history. Number five, most importantly, don't panic if you feel foggy or disoriented. That's pretty normal. It's not a sign that something went wrong. It's just your brain taking a few minutes or a few hours to fully resync with the world around it. So, waking up from anesthesia really isn't like waking up from a nap. It's a carefully engineered re-entry into consciousness, monitored by a whole team of people making sure you're safe every second. Sometimes it's smooth, sometimes it's strange, and sometimes it's kind of funny. Whether it's the blink and it's over of general anesthesia, the body disconnect of a regional block, or the quick bounce back of sedation, your experience is yours alone. So if you've had a memorable anesthesia wake up, make sure to drop your story in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the weird and wonderful world of anesthesia, hit that like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.